I first met Rick when I was on the other side of the camera. Uh, Rick was a videographer. And so Rick, uh, besides being the founder of the Space Frontier Foundation, he was also a founding member of the Board of Trustees of the X Prize, which is what uh, Brian Benny was talking about, which was the $10 million prize he won when he uh, flew to space. They flew to space twice successfully, and they won the $10 million prize. So uh, let's uh, let Rick talk to you for five minutes about uh, uh, is, uh, is the story mirror still relevant, and what is the future of space? And then we're going to do question and answer with Rick, Gus, and myself. There we go. Hi, welcome to the revolution. Um, what an amazing film that uh, Mike and his team did. Um, I tell people that, uh, you know, even if you're not a space geek, uh, you know, go see this film. I mean, it's not even about the idiots in it. It's just a really good film that they did, and a, a, great, a great piece. Um, and look, he even does his own furniture moving, which is really cool. The, uh, the background uh, regarding what, what happened with us actually goes uh, deeper and, and has much greater roots than, than that that you actually see in the film. And, you know, it would have, it would have been, had to be a miniseries to cover everything that happened leading up to it. Um, but I do want to pay homage to the, the, the person who really started all of this with all of us um, was a fellow named Gerard K. O'Neill. And a few years ago in Popular Science, I, I worked on a little article or uh, shared him working on a little article where we, I have, I have this thing that, you know, I call Rick's handy dandy guy to space. And really what I do is I kind of condense down these very complex uh, concepts so that my, my mind can understand them without uh, exploding. Now, yes, once in a while when I deal with NASA, I have what I call a Lewis Black moment and my head nearly explodes, but trying to bring these concepts into a, a world that I can understand um, uh, in my handy dandy guide, I, I was looking across the space field and I realized there's really three kinds of people in the space field right now. Um, and as you know, the, the space program was originally started when uh, we got our Germans, the Russians got their Germans. And we brought them over and put them in Alabama, uh, a place called Marshall Space Flight Center. And so the, the first category of people in the space field are what we call the Von Braunians. The Von Braunians are sort of, you know, und wie will go into space, und you will be very proud of us. And you will sit in your chair and watch on TV as we spend your tax dollars and we thrust boldly into the frontier. You'll be very, very proud. Now that's one, one kind of person. Now the next kind of person that you run into in space are, are what I call the Saganites. Now, the Saganites are billions and billions of stars. Space is grand. It's amazing. It's huge. It's God's creation. Isn't it incredible? Look at space. But don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch it. We will send robots to do that for you. We will look at it. We will be cosmic voyeurs. Now, the Von Braunians are the people that are in charge of the space program right now. They're the ones spending your tax dollars doing space in your name, sending government employees in your stead so that you can watch on TV and be very proud of your nation. That was uh, interestingly started during the Apollo program when the socialist Soviets uh, sent up Sputnik and we answered by creating our own socialist space program. Very ironic, very interesting. Um, the third kind of person are what I call the O'Neillians. That is the field, the area uh, created by a fellow named Gerard K. O'Neill, who wrote a book called The High Frontier in the 70s. Uh, as America was going through the riots, as Vietnam was happening, uh, Jerry got up. And, by the way, Jerry didn't have a funny voice. He had a beetle haircut, which was always kind of weird, and he kept it uh, to the end of his days. But uh, he didn't have a funny voice. He was just a very gentle man. Jerry uh, got in front of those kids, and he said, let me ask you this. Is the surface of a planet uh, the right place to build a technological civilization? And his students came back, and they gave him the input that, no, it isn't. That if you really want to do things right, if you want to see an expanding technological civilization without limits, you have to reach beyond the Earth. You have to use the resources of space. So Jerry's mantra was basically use your tools, use your imagination, use the resources of space that God has put out there for us to use, and expand the domain of humanity and life beyond the Earth. Well, interestingly, Jerry didn't just 
have these ideas. He wrote that book. He created a Space Studies Institute. He put together a thing called the Space Manufacturing Conference. And I'm going to date myself a little bit. But um, at the time, Saturday Night Live uh, used to have this skit called the Not Ready for Primetime Players, they called themselves. And we called our conference the Not Ready for Primetime Space Conference. Um, it was a place where you could go and say crazy things like, I'm going to fly tourists into space someday. I'm going to build a hotel in space. I believe we can actually go to an asteroid and mine it. I believe that we can actually use the, the solar power, this power of the sun in space, convert it to electricity and beam it down to the Earth. And you wouldn't get laughed out of the room. And it was very interesting because people like myself, who frankly, I, I dropped out of college. I'm just some kid from Texas who, um, you know, it was the 70s. I really don't remember a lot about it. But uh, I had a good time. And I became expert at the time at tapping kegs. Um, but people like myself who had a dream and people who were, had real degrees and, and others could come together and begin to get involved in space and actually participate yourself. And the Space Studies Institute uh, evolved a, a technology called the Mass Driver, which was how you would launch payloads off of the moon, things like that that were real breakthroughs. And he gave us what we call, what I call, permission to dream. And at those conferences, there were people like Peter Diamandis, who founded the X Prize, and Todd Hawley, his partner, founded the International Space University, myself. There were others who then spawned others and who then spawned others. There were organizations founded uh, that included people like Jeff Bezos of Amazon and others who also had the dream. And we all began to believe in ourselves that we could do it. And so Jerry founded what I call the O'Neillians. Jeff Bezos is an O'Neillian. Bert Rutan is an O'Neillian. Uh, the founder of uh, Bigelow Aerospace, Bob Bigelow, is an O'Neillian. We are all O'Neillians. We believe in the dream. And what gets me up in the morning is the concept that we can go out into space and expand civilization and carry life to worlds that are now dead. And that's an amazing thing to me. Because it's interesting that at this time in history, this time of all times, when we have the technology to destroy the Earth, to destroy each other, that at that very same time, those very same technologies can be used to carry us beyond the Earth, to give us a dream and to create a grand new future. So I am very, very pleased to, be a part of, to have been a part of this team. And I'm very, very pleased that Michael was able to make a film that showed what went on in the background. Because I want people out there to have permission to dream. We're at a very critical moment right now. President Obama has come in and interestingly has been able to begin transforming the space program. There are a lot of cries of gloom and doom that the space program is being destroyed. No, it's exactly the opposite. What's happening right now, in fact, some of those people just tried to blow me up, but that's OK. Um, it's a long way from Alabama to here. Uh, what's happening right now is the transformation of the space program into a space program that can take us anywhere, or take us everywhere, and we can stay anywhere. We're going back and putting together what I call the orbital industrial infrastructure. What we were trying to do with the Mir originally was to create a facility in orbit that we could begin to operate from. What we touch on somewhat in the story, and we, we can get maybe into the Q&A a little bit about, was that we were working on a transportation system to and from the Mir. We were working at the Mir to be able to go out and service satellites. And we wanted to be able to launch satellites in a way that had never been done before. We wanted to be able to take your satellite up. If you can visualize this, have the cosmonaut actually get into the airlock with your satellite, rather than putting it on a big shaking rocket that might blow up at any time, the cosmonaut floats out of the airlock with your satellite, opens the solar panels, gives it a, oh, tests it first while he's there, and then gives it a push, and then you fire your thrusters and off you go, knowing it will work. That would lower insurance costs and all kinds of things. Once we were able to do that, we wanted to go out and service satellites, little pods like you saw in 2001. Uh, and then bring them back. Once we had that capability, the goal was then to be able to go out and grab an asteroid. And we were going to raise the flag on the asteroid and dare anybody to come knock us off as we began to mine. Why? Because the same asteroids that could kill us, the same asteroids that could wipe us out, are there with more gold and platinum, more minerals, more resources than we could ever use in the history of the human race. So it's a big dream, and it's a dream we want to share with you. So please, be involved. When you hear what's going on with NASA, uh, call somebody up, do some research, uh, and look, tell people you want the future to be a future for you. Lewis and Clark go beyond the hill, tell us what they see, and we, the settlers and shopkeepers, the farmers, 
the people that make things grow, the people that make things profitable, the people that make civilizations grow should follow behind them.